COVID-19 has transformed our everyday choices into critical public health decisions. Suddenly, we're all weighing the risks of getting groceries or going for a walk. Figuring out the best way forward can be confusing. That's because many of the instincts and strategies we normally use to evaluate risk and make decisions just don't work very well in a pandemic. So you don't have a, a bank of personal experience that tells you, uh, you know, how, what this is like and how to deal with it. all of these things. Dr. Paul Slovic is a psychologist at the University of Oregon, where he studies our perception of risk and how that affects our decisions. Well, we used to think that people were like little actuaries, you know, they were calculating the odds and the payoff, like you might do it in Las Vegas or like economists would do. What are, what are the different consequences that could occur? But for most of us, do it with our gut feelings. Blending of feelings, positive and negative feelings, and then we just suddenly say, oh, this feels right, and you go for it, or it feels bad, and you walk away from it. This can be particularly dangerous in a pandemic, where cases can grow exponentially. But the nature of exponential growth is that it looks flat and slow until suddenly it's not. It explodes. An experiment demonstrated that if people see only the first few data points of something growing exponentially, they have trouble predicting how fast it will grow. Most people's estimates were more than 10 times too low. So our brains aren't, um, aren't wired to help us um, anticipate exponential growth. This makes measures like social distancing tough because they need to begin in the flat part of the curve when it doesn't feel like there's an emergency around us. Epidemiologists and other can work with statistics and models and numbers and make those projections. That's why it's crucial to stay up to date with the latest recommendations even though it's easy to get numb to the daily barrage of statistics. So we say statistics are human beings with the tears dried off. But understanding the risk is only the first piece of the puzzle. Choosing the best course of action is next. You know, something like a pandemic like this really drives home the reality that uh, if we don't act from a collective perspective, then everyone ends up suffering. Dr. Rana Ahmed is a bioethicist at UBC. She studies ethical decision-making and advises many Vancouver hospitals. Ethics is not so much uh, informed by facts alone. You know, the facts are useful, but what we do with those facts is a reflection of what we value as a society. Dr. Ahmed explained that people can struggle weighing what seems right for themselves and what seems right for the province. And COVID-19 is forcing us all to take a step back from our individual mindsets and recognize that we're closely linked to our neighbors. I mean, the way to think about it is uh, sort of like thinking about climbing a mountain with a group of people. We can put safety ropes around everyone on the climbing team, and, that, and that's probably just standard. And when things are going well, you probably don't even notice that the rope matters, right? You know, it, you, there's no tension in the rope. It feels like you're an independent climber until something goes wrong and you start to realize how dependent you are on everyone else on the team. And once we're aware of that rope, many choices come into focus a bit differently. So you can see why people initially thought, yes, I need to get as much hand sanitizer as I can because I want to protect myself from the virus. Of course, perfectly rational. But if I buy up all the hand sanitizer and my neighbor no longer has access to any, I'm still at risk because yes, I can clean my hands, but my neighbor can't. And my neighbor is going to walk all over my building and touch the doorknobs and open the mailbox and the banisters on the stairwell. So I've actually acted against my self-interest by focusing just on myself. Really what I should have done is bought myself hand sanitizer and also bought some for my neighbor or left some on the shelf for my neighbor to get as well. Both experts we spoke to kept coming back to the same concept. Take a moment to remember your fellow climbers. We're all on this curve together, and it will take us all working as one to get off of it. The best thing, the most ethical thing to do is to act with compassion um, and sympathy and a sense of empathy, you know, and a sense of collectiveness. This is a, a collective problem and the solution will be collective. <laughs>